Hey, what's going on everybody? In this video, I wanna share with you the process that I took to be able to carve a sign, actually in this case, it was a flag that is larger than the cutting area of my CNC. That process is called tiling. The steps that I share here with you in this video are steps that you can follow along with your own design or with the same exact file from Patriot Nation Design. The steps that I share with you can be replicated for any design. I show you some of the steps specific to this flag. Just take the steps and the concepts that I'm showing you and apply them to your design. You can pause the video and follow along with me with your specific design. And it's really not that hard and I wanna show you how to do it. So let's go ahead and jump into the video. Okay guys, so jumping into Carbide Create. So the first thing that I like to do is set up my job. And so I click on this gear and I'm going to set up the dimensions of my actual workpiece, of my actual material. I need to enter it here. So in this example, my width is gonna be 36 inches and my height is 20 inches. Everything else, go ahead and fill it out accordingly. What I do next is then I import the file that I, that I wanna cut and I size it correctly to the material. And so I already have it sized correctly on the grid and what I'd like to do next is make a few copies just to make sure that I have, have it correctly sized and available just in case if I ever need to bring something back in. The next thing once I have everything sized and I have my copies is I create my tiles. So these are just simply vectors here um, that are created that are sized correctly. In this example, there are going to be two tiles. Depending on how big the material is that you wanna carve on, will depend on how many uh, tiles you're gonna have. In this example, I divided my cutting process or my tiles in half because half of 36 inches wide is 18 inches. So I've created a vector here, which is my tile, and I've entered the dimensions of 18 inches because that is half of the width and the height will remain the same. And then I created a copy by clicking Command C or Control C if you have Windows. And what I like to do is I like to bring the first one down and snap it to the grid here by this left hand corner, just like that. Once it's snapped to the grid, I need to confirm how many vectors are intersecting this tile. As you can see here, I have one, two, three, four, five, six different vectors that are intersecting this tile. And that's important because what I need to do is I need to create a total of seven additional tiles. But I've already have one, so I need six more. So I'm just gonna click on Command C. It's two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so now that the tiles are snapped to the grid, I need to just confirm that my file is ungrouped. We need to have everything ungrouped for this next part. Once everything is ungrouped, I need to then click on a tile, hold shift, and select one of the intersecting vectors. So this is an intersecting vector here of the tile. Once I have that selected, just those two, the tile and the intersecting vector, I click on this intersection Boolean option, and it slices that vector here and removes everything to the right of it. In this example, it's to the right because I'm starting on this left-hand side. I unclick everything, click on the tile again, hold shift and select the next intersecting vector, which is this stripe. And then I click Boolean intersection. And now I have a slice right here, a cutout essentially. So I'm going to repeat the same process for all the stripes, just like that. Clicking on the tile, holding shift, selecting the stripe. So I have two vectors essentially selected the tile and the stripe click intersection boolean for these two vectors i'm just going to zoom in okay so now i have a tile that is ready to go i'm going to delete this side because i'm going to bring in one of my copies and do the exact same thing so this left hand side is completed. So I wanna go ahead and select everything and group it. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in one of my copies and I need to just overlap this. So I'm gonna zoom in here, just snap it like that. So now I have my right hand side available to do the next tile. Once this is snapped on correctly, I can click on this left hand tile and just move this one over. I'm gonna bring in the other tile, snap it to the grid. So I only have six intersecting vectors, but I need seven tile boxes is because if I were to 
complete the intersection boolean on only six tiles, the sixth one would disappear as well. And so then I wouldn't have this tile that is around or creates that border. And I need that because that's basically going to be the way that I reference everything back onto the, onto the grid. So let's go ahead and create six more tiles here. Okay, and we're going to repeat the exact same process here. Select your tile, hold shift. Oh, see, so, so the, here's an example where I need to make sure that my file is ungrouped. Let's go ahead and click off everything. Ungroup, it, ungroup the file, select my tile, select my stripe, boolean intercept. And we'll just keep repeating that process. I'm gonna delete that left-hand side and then just group this side together. Now when I connect these two tiles, I have the full image. Another reason why it's very important to keep a tile around your image is because if I were to only have, let's say if I were to remove this guy, there's no way that I'm gonna be able to get this side perfectly or exactly where it needs to be. Using a tile keeps everything proportional and allows us to put everything back where it needs to be to complete the entire image. So now what I wanna do is I wanna create the tool paths. Because this is 36 inches wide, I cannot cut that on my CNC in this horizontal direction. So what I need to do is I need to make the grid vertical. So I need to come back over here to my job setup and I need to now switch these numbers. So now this is 20 inches and now this is 36. I need to rotate my tiles now, 270 degrees. And before I attach them to the grid, I need to make copies just to have available. If anything were to ever go wrong, I have, I have the copies available. So now with the grid oriented correctly, I can now start creating my tool paths. I needed the grid vertically because when I'm actually placing the material on the CNC, it's going to be placed vertically. I'm going to be shifting the material down vertically. And once I show you what I'm talking about, it'll make more sense. So now I need to create my tool paths. So I need to get rid of this guy because I'm going to start with this side first, the right hand side of the flag. And so what I need to do is I need to now ungroup everything. I need to get rid of this tile. Once the tile is removed, now we can set up our tool paths. We just don't want that tile to be carved. At this point, you can set up your tool paths however you want to do it. You know your machine, you know how certain things will come out. So let me go ahead and do that here real quick and then I'll show you how I set up my tool paths. I like to set up my tool paths in groups. And so there are different groups here that you can decide to do, but these are the ones that I did. The first group is gonna be the snake. The second group is gonna be the text and the circle. And the third group is going to be the stripes. One thing that I did do off camera was I did bring in the entire circle. I didn't want this cut continuously in one path rather than multiple paths. So I brought in the circle in its entirety. That's one of those things that you have to keep in mind that you may have to bring in entire parts of an image just to make sure that that's carved correctly. In this case, the circle does fall within the cutting area of my CNC. So there's nothing wrong with me bringing in the entire circle and carving it at once. I like to start off my tool paths with the most complicated part of the design. So that's going to be the snake. And so for this, I did an advanced V card. The next thing that I wanna do is going to be the text and the circle. Uh, and that's completely done with a V carve tool path. And lastly, I will do the stripes with an advanced V carve. When I save my G codes, I like to save my G codes with one single name because I won't start my next tool path until the first one is done. So for example, the snake will be under this tiling name. Once this is complete, I will then disable this advanced V carve and then I will do the next tool path and then save that as the tiling, replace it, and then upload it to Carbide Motion and then send that off. So let's go ahead and send this off to the machine. In the next part of this video, I wanna show you how to place your material on the CNC. One thing to keep in mind when measuring with your tape measure is that there's usually a 16th inch gap between the metal tip, so you want to not have that gap when measuring. Make sure to keep everything together when measuring. 
With that in mind, in this example, I measured 18 inches from the right edge and made a mark at the center of the board on the side of the board. I then took my tape measure over to the CNC waste board and measured 18 inches from the edge of the waste board and made a mark there. I then took my board and lined up the edge of the board to the front edge of the waste board and made sure that the two marks matched. Once I made sure everything was where it should, I used my brad nailer to secure the board down to the waste board. I usually use double sided tape, but I didn't want to risk the flag moving, so I used brad nails. It does require some cleanup afterwards, but I'm okay with that. Once the material is secured, you need to zero your X, Y, and Z axis. Once these are set, you never change your X and Y for the entire project, but you can reset your Z axis, and I made sure to reset my Z axis before carving my stars. So here's the first finished tile. With the first tile finished, you go back into Carb I Create, and we now need to remove the current tile and replace it with the second tile. Go ahead and set up your toolpaths and send it off to the machine just like before. And when setting up your toolpaths, keep in mind you'll want to replicate the same settings if it's a continuation of a vector previously carved. For example, the stripes in this flag had a max depth of 0.04 inches, in both tiles. Those are some of the things that you'll want to keep in mind when setting up the toolpaths. With the first tile finish, you'll need to move the physical board down. I used a chisel to raise the board and then used my Milwaukee wire cutters to remove the brad nails. These wire cutters are one of the best tools that I've had that are not essential but have been so useful over the years for so much more than cutting wires. Once the nails are removed, I moved the board down. I brought the center line down to the edge of the waste board this time and secured the board again with the brad nails. With the board secured, I ran the next tool pass to complete the flag. What do you guys think? This flag is part of a concealment flag build, so if you want to see that video, make sure to click on your screen now. I appreciate you guys, and I'll see you on the next one.